In this video, I'm going to show you what it means to have an angle in standard position, and then also show you what reference angles are. So on a Cartesian plane, meaning that it's a two-dimensional surface, if an angle is in standard position, then the angle has its vertex on the origin, and the initial arm on the positive x-axis. So we would have the vertex on the origin here at 0, 0. The initial arm is this arm here. And it's going to start on the x-axis. And then it rotates like this. Okay. And this would be the theta value or our angle. So this arm here is called the terminal arm. Terminal meaning that's where the angle ends. So after a rotation about the origin, the final position is called the terminal arm, just like I stated. Now, if the angle is measured in the counterclockwise direction, such as I've drawn up here, then the angle is going to be positive. But if I take an angle and it's measured in the clockwise direction, so let's say we start here and go clockwise, then the angle is going to be negative. All right, but luckily for you in Math 11, we're only gonna be looking, looking at positive angles. So a few other things, um, when we describe angles, we can say that they're in quadrant one, two, three, or four. And when we measure angles, we start here on the initial arm is zero degrees. Then this will be 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and then 270, and then back to zero, which would be 360 degrees. Just for your information, if we did go in the other direction, this would be negative 90. This would be negative 180. This would be negative 270. And then we would then have negative 360. So let's take a look at how to sketch. So if I asked you to sketch each angle in standard position, and I also want you to state the quadrant in which the terminal arm lies. So the first one here is 150 degrees. So when we draw this, we want to, it doesn't have to be exact. You don't have to take out a protractor. So the angle will start here and it's going to end at about here. And I want you to draw in the arc to show that it's going in the positive direction. This would be 150 degrees. And this quadrant is going to be quadrant two that it ends in. So 60 degrees, the terminal arm is going to end in the first quadrant. This would be my angle here at 60 degrees, and this would be quadrant one. All right, so let's now take a look at what a reference angle is. So for each angle in standard position, there's a corresponding acute angle called the reference angle. And we represent that with a theta with the subscript r. So acute, remember, an acute angle is an angle that is less than 90 degrees. Now, the reference angle, it has to be acute. And it's the angle between the terminal arm and the x-axis and that will be your measurement it is always represented by a positive value and it measures between zero degrees and 90 degrees again emphasizing that it's acute so in quadrant one if you have this angle here we would say that this is my angle and the measure of the reference angle would be this angle here. So I'm going to call it theta r. So notice that in the first quadrant, the reference angle is equal to the angle itself. Now, when you take a look at quadrant two, the angle is measured like this, but the measure of the reference angle 
Now remember the definition. It's an acute angle, and it has to be between the terminal arm, so here's the terminal arm, and the x-axis. So here's the x-axis. So this angle here is obtuse, where theta is. So the measure of a reference angle is going to be this one on the other side here. So to get this value, you can think of this as 180 degrees, going all the way around, or halfway around, I should say. And then we need to subtract theta, and that will leave us with the remaining amount, which is theta r. In quadrant 3, this would be my angle. And then let's take a look at the definition. It is the acute angle between the terminal arm, so here's my terminal arm, and the x-axis. So here's my x-axis. So this angle here would be obtuse, so the measure of my reference angle is this angle over here. This time, to figure that out, if I take the angle itself, but then I subtract this 180 degrees for halfway around, then I'm going to be left with theta r. So basically what I'm doing is I'm surpassing 180, and then I have to take back the 180 to get my reference angle. Lastly, in quadrant 4, this would represent my angle, theta. And the reference angle, again, is between the terminal arm and the x-axis. So the measure of the reference angle would be this angle here, which we'll call theta r. So to find this one, remember that to go all the way around is 360 degrees, which would be too far. So if I take 360 degrees and then I subtract theta, then I will have left the reference angle, theta r. Now, important to note, but we're not really exactly using it right now, but angles that are in standard position, such as theta, and the reference angles, these ones I've drawn in red, will have the same trigonometric ratio, except the sign will differ, which we'll take a look at later on in the next section. Now, let's take a look at and practice finding the reference angles. So you might want to draw them, so that helps you figure out which quadrant they're in. So 168 degrees, so knowing that this is 90, and this is 180, 168 has to be over here. So this is going to be 168 degrees. So then my reference angle is this little bit here. So to find that, I'm going to go 180 minus 168, and that gives me 12 degrees. Let's take a look at 300. So 300, now remember this is 90, 180, and 270 degrees. So 300 has to be between 270 and 360. So this is my angle. So the reference angle that's left will be this value here. So to find that, I'm going to go all the way around, which is 360 degrees. And then I need to take away this angle here, which was 300. And then that will give me 60 degrees. All right, let's take a look at a different kind of example. So determine the measure of each angle in standard position, given the reference angle this time, and then the quadrant in which the terminal arm lies. So in this example here, we're going backwards. So I've given the reference angle, and I've told you what quadrant the angle's in. So drawing a picture, I know the angle's in quadrant two, and it has a reference angle of 32 degrees. So that means that this here is 32 degrees. Remember, this is quadrant two, this was quadrant one. So the angle that I want to find, because I want to find it in standard position, is this angle here. So to find that, I'm going to go 180 degrees, which would be halfway around, subtract the 32 degrees, and then I'll get back the remaining angle, which is going to be 148 degrees.